Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to watch Monday Marriage Moment. This is Renee, I'm Jason. We are not marriage counselors, we're not marriage experts, just married. Yeah. And we like marriage, I think it's good. We're trying to do what Ephesians 5 says, to honor marriage. So we have been walking through this book together for the last several weeks, your time-starved marriage, trying just to figure out in our busy lives, how do we make time to improve our marriage? Because you don't accidentally have a good marriage, no. you'll work for it. Part of working for it is finding time. And we've been talking about time minds. Can you explain that concept? What's a time mine? So a time mine is a time that you find in your day or your week or your month where you can um, add some more moments together. Um, kind of like finding a gold, <laughs> piece of gold somewhere. It's some time that you probably already are doing something. But if you really get intentional, it can be special time for your marriage. Today's timeline, most people when they hear what we're going to talk about are going to be tempted just to go, boop, move on to the next thing. Yeah. Because this is something most of us don't like to talk about. It's the number one cause of conflict in marriage. It's the number one cause of ending of marriages. Yeah. It makes us uncomfortable. You're not going to like it. We're going to talk about you say, money, 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 <laughs> cash, Ola. And we're, before you turn us off, we are not, we're not going to talk about, hey, make a budget and here's how to make a budget. We're not going to talk about get out of debt and here's how you get out of debt because there's so many great, great resources and that's not the angle we're taking. The angle we're taking is there is some time in your day and in your week where your finances take some of the time but if you did some things as a couple you would find that you would have more time to to spend on yourselves than on focusing on the money yeah so that's really what we're looking at is how do we how do we make that balance because there's a strong strong connection between time and money always has been always will be how do we find time for marriage when it comes to our finances yeah, so it's interesting. He starts the chapter out with the question of, would you rather have more time or more money? Yeah, that's a great question for you to ask yourselves. Would you rather have, his example was, would you rather have $10,000 or more time to spend, more free time? Mm -hmm. And 51% said we would rather have the time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it is. So it's something to think about together. But it wants you to start as a couple with... Um, this question of how do you manage your money together? And it's asking, like, look at what your roles are um, in your marriage with finances. And it, it could change over time. Um, like, for example, for us, when we talked about this, when we first um, were married and for several years, um, I was staying home. I was um, taking care of the kids and I was teaching piano, so I didn't have a full-time job. And so I paid the bills mostly, and I mean we would talk about it, but I did the actual mm -hmm. paying of the bills. And um, at, somewhere there along the line, once we had several kids at home and I had another job that I was doing, you took over paying the bills. And so it changed mm -hmm. with us, and it may happen for other couples too. It's going to look different, I think, for everybody. But the roles it's talking about is like, who pays the bills? Who's working and making the money is it both of you or is it only one um do you have a budget do you have to live strictly with a budget or can you live without having to have a budget and that's going to depend too on what season of life you're in yeah i think this whole concept of how do we as a couple manage our money there's not a way to do this no. it's going to be different for every single couple depending on just your status in life, you know, maybe you're trying to make one income work yeah. or, or maybe your season in life. Like we're in this empty nest season where we both have jobs, but no bills to pay because our kids are gone. So yeah. it's different than when we were first married and we could not buy toilet paper or yeah. paper towels some week. <laughs> um, so it's, it just depends on your season of life, your status of life, your goals in life. But it's a question you have to ask, how will we manage our money together? And I was just thinking... You know, the whole paying bills thing has really changed over the years because mm -hmm. now, I mean, I don't, I don't write a check to anybody. It's just set up in your bank account and out it goes. But you do need to have a plan together. Who manages the money? Who kind of gets the final say? Who, who makes sure everything is okay? 
um, know your role. Yeah. Is one of the, the best ways to mine time is to just make sure you agree on your roles. Right. Whatever they are. So that's a great conversation to have yep. and to figure that out. Um, the next part was one of our favorite parts. For sure. I love <laughs> this part. And it's this next timeline is going to seem crazy for most of us. It's going to seem totally wrong. It's just going to seem backwards. And yeah. I think it is that's okay yeah it is and it's a mindset it is a mindset it's a mindset that I think we get from our culture 100% from our culture we may not even mean to do this or know that we're doing this yep. but it's this whole concept of we want more more we that's need the word. more more yeah. we need more house we need more car we need more diapers we need more clothes we need more vacation we need more social status we just need more yeah. And as a Western 21st century person, that's just how we're wired, that you always seek more. Yeah. So when you are seeking more and you need more, you think, you're going to have to work more. If you need more cashola, you're either going to have to take another job or take a promotion or get an additional job. You're going to have to work more to make more, usually. Yeah. Which means something is going to be sacrificed or suffer and it's going to be time. If you're working more so you can spend more, the end result is less time. Yeah, for your relationship. For your relationship. Almost always what suffers is a family relationship. Yeah. So what this is talking about is um, having a different mindset of enough. Enough. Changing your life goals from more to enough. Yeah, like we have most of the things that we want we have everything we need um, it's okay to not want more than that right and Paul used the word content mm -hmm. that's a that's a strong word but in our culture we are we have been taught that if you are offered a promotion you're stupid to say no you, like you have to say yes yeah. if you are offered an opportunity to make more money then you say yes if you're offered an opportunity to advance then you say yes and there's nothing wrong with that until you begin to seek more just for more's sake right. and the more you seek more the less time you have and so it's this balancing act and you have to decide together as a couple okay how long will we pursue more and will there ever be a time when we say enough where if I do get an opportunity to advance in this company but it means another 10 hours a week, would I be okay saying no so I can stay home with my family? Yeah. Um, I, I love hearing stories of men, and there's several in our community who had opportunity to advance or to take the big job and said, you know what, I'm going to focus on family right now, and I'm not going to take that. And it was like, what do you mean you're going to focus on family? You don't want to be the boss. You don't want to be the head coach. You don't want to be in charge of all these things. And the answer is, no, I want to focus on family. I think that's that's where you get to the point where you can say, enough. Yeah. I don't have to have more to have a better life. Yeah. Uh, but I might need some more time to have a better life. Mm -hmm. And he says, when we can get to a point where we're living with enough, we find this balance of time for our relationship and our marriage, and time for our work, and we're not, we're not stressed. Yep. It's a balance. So... I think that's a really important concept for I think so too. Yeah. The third time mine is just to get rid of the idea, and I say this every time I do a wedding, forget the idea that marriage is 50-50. Yeah. It, is, it has never been. It will never be. You cannot have a fair marriage. Yeah. And he called it the counting game. The counting <laughs> game. And I remember us kind of being in some of this when the kids were little. If you were out golfing or doing something that you wanted to do that you didn't take the kids with you, then guess who had to have the kids? Me. Right. And so I automatically wanted there to be some time when I was going to get to do what I wanted to do and you were going to have the kids. It's this, you know, keeping up with counting how many minutes did you get to do this? So when you go into t to money, not just time, but when you're thinking about this with money, then you're asking these questions of, well, how much is each of us spending and why and how often and shouldn't that be pretty equal and he said you know 
it's easy to get kind of caught up in this in a marriage and just keep everything fair and want it to be fair like this. But he said, when you start doing this counting game, you're putting your marriage on a scale and you start to have this thought of, well, what am I getting out of this marriage instead of building the best marriage that you right. can have? I see this a lot when I talk to some, some struggling couples. Um, and it's, you have to have a, some conclusion over the question, is this my, the money I make, is it my money or is it our money? Yeah. So I get paid for my job, is that just my money? And you get paid for your job, is that just your money? And for some couples, that's how they work it. I would suggest though, that as a married couple, it's not my money and your money, it's our money. Mm -hmm. And how do we use this money to make our lives better, to make our marriage better? And if I'm always counting how much you spend on stuff for you, then what I'm doing is setting up my marriage and my brain for a very nitpicky, annoying, always irritated relationship. Yeah, and it would, I could see how that would steal time 100%. from your marriage. I think this is where the conflicts usually start and where divorce usually ends up mm -hmm. is because somebody started counting especially when we're talking about money, is he spends more money than me or she goes on these shopping sprees and your selfishness begins to take over. And so I love their, their conclusion is, hey, allow us just to make one simple suggestion. <laughs> Stop counting. Stop. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds really easy just to say no. that. Stop counting. But stop thinking in terms of making sure things are, are equal. Um, you're in this together. Yeah, and that's a mindset too. It's 100% a mindset. Yeah. So the next part was talking about worrying about money and finances, which I think that's another thing that steals your time. It definitely steals your joy. Worry steals a lot of stuff from yeah. you. Yeah, and so he talked a little bit about just ways that we can be careful that we're not just worrying all the time and sometimes we do that and we don't even realize mm -hmm. it wakes you up at night um, I think they may have talked about it in this part that you know to be out of debt and to not be in over your head would really help mm -hmm. with this we're not having to be so worried all the time I think communicating when I start feeling that way about some of our finances I just have gotten to the point where I can just ask you where are we, where do we stand on this? And should I be worried? And you know, how are we doing on whatever it is that I'm thinking about? And we just communicate about it and then I'm okay. So maybe just realizing if that's an issue, if you are a worrier, yeah. that this could be a time stealer. I think bottom line for that, yeah. It, but that's the bottom line is that worry is always a time and a joy killer. So figure out a way that you don't have to worry. Yeah. Have a plan. Yeah. And sometimes prayer mm -hmm. just completely takes care of that. Yep. <laughs> so um, I think the last one that we wanted to hit on was to be able to give what you can. Um, I know when our kids were young and we were, everybody was involved and stuff and we were trying to make it on your salary and a small amount of my salary, um, we were very much on a budget. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to find money that we could give. Um, the tithe and mm -hmm. giving away to help other people. Uh, I think we're in a different place now where we can do that a little bit easier because there's extra money. But I think that is a huge thing. And this quote that Billy Graham, they have from Billy Graham, that if a person can get their attitude and just money in management and taken care of, then it seems like everything else falls into place. Yeah, he like said if, if a person gets his attitude towards money straight, it will help straighten out almost every other area of life. Yeah. It's so true. It is. And we, I think everybody, a lot of people in our church have figured out giving mm -hmm. to other people is such a blessing and such a joy to do. And if a couple figures that out, it's a huge blessing for a marriage to, to give to other people. Yeah. Well, nobody likes to talk about money, so if you've stayed with us through this whole talk, man, that's awesome. Way to go. It can be something that can really divide your marriage, 
But if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to, to talk and be honest and open and work together, you can find that even with your finances, you can discover some time you can invest in your in your marriage just by eliminating some of the problems. Right. So don't let money be a thing that divides you. It's the bottom line. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We love you guys. See you next time. <laughs>